And now, suspense. Your host is Autolite. And this is Terry O'Sullivan substituting for Rex Marshall and speaking for the Autolite family. Well, it was in 1928 that the first DeSoto automobile was introduced to the public. And tonight, our Autolite family is privileged to salute DeSoto and their great new line for 1952. The DeSoto division of Chrysler Corporation is a distinguished member of the Autolite family, a family that includes nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 Autolite plants from coast to coast and in many foreign countries, as well as more than 18,000 people who've invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Our family also includes 96,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world, as well as leading manufacturers of cars, trucks, tractors, planes, and boats who use Autolite products as original equipment. Tonight, our Autolite family joins in saluting DeSoto and DeSoto Plymouth dealers everywhere. Later, we'll have the very great pleasure of introducing Mr. J.B. Wagstaff, Vice President in Charge of Sales of the DeSoto Division of Chrysler Corporation, who'll tell us about the new DeSoto. Now the Autolite family brings you Suspense. Soon as it gets dark. Well, I'm lucky I caught you. I have to drive over to Calumet late tonight. Yeah? Well, you'd have made it all right. The shoe wouldn't have come off. I know, but I just like to be safe. Oh, oh, say. Did you put kerosene in the lamp? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's good. I'll need them. I'm going through the wood. Bye, Bob. Well, Miss Harris. Your daddy always says I have a shiny nose. Can we stay up until daddy comes? No, no, sweetie. I have to drive ten miles to get him. And I have to drive ten miles to bring him back. Oh, dear. One single decent hat. A man called. No, oh, the feather. What man? The man with his wife that was killed. What? That's what Granny said. She said someone killed his wife going to tell you, man. Oh, that must be Dr. Tabor. What do you want? He said if you were going to meet Daddy, he wanted a ride. I wonder if that really was Dr. Tabor. Why? Well, sweetie, I'm certainly not going to drive for two hours through the dark woods with somebody I don't even know. Uh, Hello? Oh, hello, Dr. Tabor. 
Yes. Yes. Oh, oh I see. It isn't... Well, of course, I'd love to. Well, I'll pick her up. Well, I can pick her up downtown. Well, let's say on Elm, just across from the church. In about 15 minutes? Oh, not at all. I'm really delighted for the company. All right. All right, Dr. David. Bye. <laughs> You must be more careful with messages. It was Dr. Tabor's sister who wants the ride. Is she old? <laughs> well, I suppose she isn't young. What does she want the ride for? Well, I think that she's a nurse. I, I think she works over in Calumet. Now, you be good boys, and don't you bother your grandmother. You go right to bed now, you hear me? Good night, sweetheart. Warmish night, isn't it? Feels if spring was already here. Or maybe that's beginning to see my husband. He's a mining engineer. He's been away for six weeks in South America. Yes, I know. Don't your brother know I was going to drive over tonight? I suppose somebody told him. Oh, maybe the blacksmith's boy. Well, anyway, I'm delighted with company. Oh, there's the cuddle. Oh. Something wrong. Somehow I I hate to go into those woods. Why? Wasn't your brother's wife? Yes. But she was driving alone. I wonder if she stopped to pick somebody up. Nobody knows exactly. No, I suppose not with the way they found her. The way they found the buggy or burn. Tremendous trees, aren't they? going through those woods. Ten miles. Not a farm. Not a light. Not a cabin. We can go fast. There won't be fog in the woods. I think I'll let down the curtains. Anyway, some of them. Make us feel snugger. Can I go too? I don't know. Why, this is the meanest tie. I don't know why it's stuck down here. Yeah. Here, I'll... Oh, Mary did that easily. You must have strong hands. There. Now I'll go and get the other one. There. What's what? Sounds like a sick dog. No, it's a bobcat. Oh, well, never mind the other curtain. You're nervous? Let's just get going. Get up, Blaze. Get up. Mm, wood smell wonderful, don't they? Oh, oh easy, easy, Blaze. Don't tell me we're going to have worse frog. Mm -hmm. All right, now, easy, girl. Your voice sounds familiar. I suppose it's like brothers. 
I like a low voice. I don't think we've ever met before, have we? I almost never come over. Except now that my brother's so baffled and broody, I feel I just have to. You mean baffled about... They've been married only three months. Must be awful for him. I suppose he hardly sleeps. He must always be wondering what really happened. Oh. Ooh. Who it was that do this so brutal? Whoa, Blaze, whoa! What's wrong now? I'll see if I can't turn those lamps up. Then you know there was that other girl, too. You know, that strange girl that was driving through town? Nobody knew her at all, except she was found the same way, right? The same spot in the woods. Killed just like your brother's wife. We must have poured kerosene all over both of them last thing. So obviously it was the same person who killed both. You guys, weren't they both found in the same condition, same spot? Must be somebody around here. understand is why wouldn't he be caught? Probably he's so nice and quiet nobody would dream of him. Did you know maniacs can be very quiet? Get up, Liz! Get up! Mrs. Haley. Yes? This is almost exactly the spot. Up the road, right up the road. He had a little lean to made out of old planks, and that's where he took each one. But what baffles me so is why would he take the second one to the same spot? Why? Unless he had some strange kind of compulsion to repeat the identical pattern. Mrs. Haley, now that we're coming near the spot, I must tell you something. It may shock you, but I had to do it. I mean, to try and catch the killer. Miss Haley, I'm really Dr. Taylor. Huh? And I dressed this way because I have a hunch the killer is out tonight and is out to get you. Me? Me, Dr. Taylor? Yes. Do you know anything about <laughs> maniacal killers? Well, I don't. Continue with our suspense story shortly. Right now, it is our privilege to introduce Mr. J.B. Wagstaff, Vice President in Charge of Sales of the DeSoto Division of Chrysler Corporation. Good evening. We're very happy that our friends at Autolite chose tonight as DeSoto Night. You see, we have just announced our sensational new DeSoto Fire Dome 8, and we very much want all of you to see it. So on behalf of the soda dealers everywhere, I invite you to drop in to see and drive this great car. And what you will see now will give you some idea of what a wonderful car it really is. Announcing the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. This is it, the most exciting new automobile in America, the beautiful new DeSoto, 
with the most exciting new engine in America, the 160 horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine. Here is an entirely new kind of automobile engine with hemispherical or dome-shaped combustion chambers that produce more work per unit of fuel than any other automobile engine. This means the DeSoto Fire Dome 8 gives you reserve power and acceleration you never dreamed possible. Yes, reserve power at all speeds and on regular gasoline. You also might be interested in knowing that Autolite electrical equipment fires this great new engine. And notice that attractive air vent hood that directs an added stream of cool air right to the carburetor for even greater engine power. The new DeSoto also brings you power steering, one of the most remarkable advancements in automobile history. DeSoto power steering takes practically all the effort out of turning the wheels. Look at that, as easy as dialing a phone. One finger is all it takes to turn the wheels, even when the car is at a standstill. When parking, you've never known anything to compare with DeSoto power steering. Look how easily wheels turn, and with practically no effort on the part of the driver. And out on the highway, DeSoto power steering makes your control of the car easier, safer, with less road shock. Add to these a host of other great DeSoto features, like waterproof ignition, big safeguard hydraulic brakes, and many electrical parts by Autolite. Safety rim wheels to protect your family in case of blowout. Or a flow shock absorbers change even the roughest roads into boulevards. Add all these and you've got America's most talked about new car. The exciting 160 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8. It's now at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The Autolite family wishes to express to Mr. Wagstaff and to the DeSoto division of Chrysler Corporation our sincere appreciation for our many years of association with Plymouth and DeSoto Plymouth dealers everywhere. And now, back to the second act of Night Drive, starring Robert H. Harris and Neva Patterson. What will I do? What will I do? He's the killer. He killed his wife. He killed the other one. And now, it's me. The old days. These maniacs were called werewolves because they destroyed their victims like beasts. And so the story of the werewolf began. How a human being turned into a wild beast to kill and rend and terrorize. There's a light. There's a light. Someone's waiting a light. Did you get lost in here for good? 
Why did, why did you call me Margaret? Is that your name? Yes. That's why I called you Margaret. Oh. As soon as I get my breath, let's get back on the road. Sure. Well, you shouldn't come driving through here without your husband. Oh. He's away, isn't he? I guess you and him love each other as much as anybody in town. Except maybe Dr. Tabor and his wife. I mean, she was pretty. Did you ever see her skin? She had brown eyes, too. I guess we need more eyes. Hey, Mrs. Haney! Dr. Tabor? Mrs. Haney, do you hear me? Please listen carefully and then call out. Mrs. Haney! I'm almost sure that boy killed my wife! It's crazy, I bet he killed his wife. Mrs. Haney, remember! Whoever killed those two is a maniac! It brought kerosene over both of them and burned them! Mrs. Haney! Mrs. Haney! Come on, Margaret, let's beat it. Huh? What's the matter? Well, don't tell me you're scared of me now. Okay, okay go on, yell out. Go on, go on, he'll hear you yell out. Okay. So we're hiding there. We'll catch your breath. The old geezer will be gone. We can head back for the road. Come on, duck in. Left us a lamp. How do you know? Well, it's real snug in here. Like the little bear's down. Bob, I want to go out. Don't be afraid. Nobody can see a light through here. What's this? What? It's a can over here. I don't know. Isn't it a kerosene can? Yeah, I guess so. I guess the hunter had it for his lamp. But would he leave it? Sure, why not? No. I bet the doctor killed that other girl, too. She kind of looked like his wife. I seen her once. She was pretty. Same kind of big brown eyes. I guess he took her after you for the same reason. Why, am I like her? Yeah, yeah. But this girl was a stranger. She was. She come from Winnetka. Nobody ever said she was from Winnetka. They didn't? No. They didn't know where she was from. How did you know? Oh, well, I remember because she, uh, she come in to blacksmith and we got talking. And... That's all. Let's see what's in that can. Maybe just water. I could use a drink. Hey, Anna, go on. No, not yet. Where I am? I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, not yet. I couldn't let you. No. You're safe. Don't be afraid. I know what you're thinking. What? Well, what Dr. Tabor said. Tabor what? And didn't he tell you that each time a body was found outside a little lean-to? And how inside the dirt was all scruffed up like there'd been a struggle? Let's get out of here. What's the matter? Can't you stand me? Don't you like my looks? Uh, well, you got too much class for me, is that it? Oh, no. Oh, I'm the horse face. You got too much class for me, huh? Here you are. You 
think it's me, don't you? Yes, I do. I think you killed his wife. And I think you killed the other girl. <laughs> sure I did. I killed them both. And the dirty blacksmith and all he had was fish eyes from me. Just like you now staring at me. I don't like that. You drive me crazy. I don't like it, Jerry. Never stop. I don't know. <laughs> Well, Sheriff, the last time I saw them, they were headed this way. You die? Just like you're gonna. <laughs> if you're ever gonna see that husband, you'd better start along. Alone. Tell you what, Sheriff. Why don't you drive with Mrs. Hale? Hmm? Suits me if it suits her. I'll take the boy back in your rig. Is that all right, ma'am? Thank you, doctor. Suspense has again been brought to you by the Autolite family. Tonight we had the privilege of saluting a distinguished member of our family, the DeSoto Division of Chrysler Corporation. We were happy to have as our guest Mr. J.B. Wagstaff, DeSoto's Vice President in charge of sales, and to hear about the new DeSoto. This is Terry O'Sullivan saying good night for the Autolite family and inviting you and your family to be with us next week for another thrilling Autolite Suspense program. Join us next week when Suspense will present Day of Infamy, the story of the bombing of Pearl Harbor, starring Signa Hasso, Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. This is the CBS Television Network.